All right, as you've seen so far, we've talked about just basic factoring. We've talked about taking out the greatest common factor. Sometimes we have to take out a negative. But we also saw that sometimes the factors we take out are not just single terms, but they are groups. And so that leads us to our discussion factoring by grouping. Now typically, typically, not always, we use with polynomials, we use this technique with polynomials that have four terms. We use this with polynomials that have four terms. Now that is not to say that you can only do this with four terms because there are some examples where you can do some interesting factoring by grouping with more than four terms. But just typically the way we see this, you have just four terms when you're trying to factor. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean by this. If I take x to the third plus 9x squared plus 5x plus 45. Now this could be a pretty ugly polynomial and you're prob probably wondering how do I factor this. Uh, traditional methods aren't going to really help you out here. There's no common factor to take out of everybody so if you just leave it there you're kind of stuck. But we're not going to leave it there. What we're going to do is we're going to create groups. Now I want you to create groups the way I create the groups. Don't put parentheses around these guys because that could mess you up. Uh, putting the parentheses, if you don't do it right, I'll actually give you something that's not, not right. It's not accurate. I'm just going to underline these first two terms. If you look at just these first two terms, and that's it, what do you guys see? What's in common? Well, I hope that you'll see that between these two terms, just these two terms, they have a common factor of x squared. So if I factor out x squared, I'm left with x plus 9. And if you don't believe me, distribute it back, and you're going to find out that it is x to the third plus 9x squared. Well, look at the second group. The second group consists of plus 5x plus 45. The common factor here is 5. Now, pay attention. Whatever this sign is, is going to be the sign you have right here. So my common factor is a plus 5. If you don't have this plus here, that looks like parentheses with a 5 right next to it, which indicates multiplication. That's not what you're doing. This stuff, these factors came from the first half. Then we're going to work on the second half right here. So if I take out the 5, 5x five divided by the 5 is x. The 45 divided by the 5 is plus 9. So think back to the last video that we did. You see that you have the common factor here of x plus 9. So what we saw in the last video is that factor, we pull that guy out front, so x plus 9. And if I factor this guy as a common factor out, then I just write what's left over. And the remaining pieces would be x squared plus 5. Well, that's super neat. If you don't believe me, check this out. And with all these problems, you should check your work. Now, you're not going to see me do that. Just know that I'm checking it in my head. That, that, that's valid, right? Uh, if you FOIL this, x times x squared is x to the third. x times 5 is plus 5x. Inside, you get plus 9x squared, and then 9 times 5 is 45. Well, look at this. You still have your x to the third term. The 5x and the 9x squared you had in the original, they were just kind of flip-flopped around. No big deal. And there's your 45. So we checked our work, and we have verified that this is the factorization. Now, that doesn't seem to be too bad, right? Well, let's keep going. Let's do another example and see if you guys can get this. All right. Let's work with this example. 4x to the third minus 3x squared plus 
plus 12x minus 9. When I look at this guy, I'm trying to see, first of all, is there a common factor for everybody? Is there anything that goes into all of these guys? And the answer is no. Well, that's, that's no big deal. Let's look at this first group right here. Do these guys have anything in common? What do you see they have in common? 4 and 3, those guys are prime numbers, or they're relatively prime, which means they have no common factor other than 1. But, you'll notice that they do have a common factor of x squared. So I'm going to factor out x squared, and what am I left with? Well, if I take x squared out of this first term, I have 4x. If I take x squared out of the second term, I have minus 3. Now look inside here. Do these guys have anything else in common? No, they don't, so we should feel pretty good about what we have. Then we move on to the second group plus 12x minus 9. Let's see, they don't have any x's in common, but 12 and 9 do have a common factor of 3. And remember, this sign goes right here, so it's a plus 3 that you're factoring out. And if I factor or divide out the 3, what do I have? Well, there's the 4x, and negative 9 divided by 3 is a minus 3. So, do you see how we can finish factoring this guy by grouping? These factors right here are exactly the same. So just what we did in the last example, that is my large common factor that comes up front. So there's 4x minus 3, and then you see what is left over. I took out the 4x minus 3, it's right here. That was a common factor for these two larger groups, and I'm left with x squared plus 3. There's nothing else these guys have in common, so we're done. And I trust that you guys will take this out on the side and you will check to make sure that what you have is correct. Can I trust you with that? Yes! Good. I'm glad you guys agree with me. Alright. Well, let's try another one. Let's make it a little bit more challenging, right? Because these problems can't all be easy. All right. Let's see. What sounds good to you guys? All right. Let, let's do this. 16, x to the third, y, minus 28, x squared y minus 8, <coughs> excuse me, 8x y squared plus 14y squared. Oh dear. You know what? So let's just go ahead and stop the video right now. This, you know, look on the side. I bet there's another fun YouTube video that you can watch and that's more exciting. I bet Lady Gaga has something new out. Or if you're watching this five years from when I recorded it, some what, whoever is popular right now, just watch them. Oh, I'm glad you stuck around. Good. Now, let's get down to business. Let's factor this. You know, I was about to just underline this group right here. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot my little song. Because the first thing you do when you factor, you gotta factor out what? The greatest common factor. Did you do that? Or are you just being a punk who's just watching this and you're just gonna do it all on your own and not listen to me? Well, there's something that all of these guys have in common. Let's see if you can figure out what it is. It's kinda like a Where's Waldo kind of thing. Which, if you didn't know what I look like, now you do. Let's see. These guys all have a 2 in common. These guys are all div divisible by 2. So I can at least pull out the common factor of 2. Alright, so let's do that. I've got a common factor of 2, but wait a minute. They all contain... Uh, ah, 
They don't all contain x. This guy's messing up the fun. But they do all contain y. So the amount of y that I can factor out of all of these is just one y, because that's the least amount that I have. All right, well, let's do that. Let's see what I have. When I take out the 2y here, I have 8 x to the third. 28 divided by 2 is 14, so minus 14 x squared. I already took the y out. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. I have my x, and I still have one y left over. And then finally, 14 divided by 2 is 7. I had y squared, so I only have one y left. Now, we've got the grace common factor for the whole polynomial taken out. I just have to figure out what to do with the rest of this right here. This is where I kind of go into bubble mode, my, my thought mode. What am I going to do with this? Well, let's see. In this first group, what's my common factor? Well, in this group, my common factor is 2 x squared. So I take out my 2x squared and what's left over? Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4. You add x to the third. Now you just have x. And negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. You had x squared. You took out x squared. So that guy's done. Then I look at my second group. The minus 4xy plus 7y. Remember what I told you. Whatever this sign is here is going to be the sign of whatever you factor out. What goes into both of these guys? 4 and 7 have nothing in common except 1, so who cares? But they do both have a y in common, so let's factor that out. If I take out not just the y, but also the negative, what happens? It was a negative, but I took that out, so it's going to be a positive 4, x, but no y, because I took the y out. And then over here, I had a positive 7. Take out the negative, so that becomes a negative 7. I had the y, but I took the y out, so that guy's done. Now, how do we know this is right? Well, let's take a close look at this. Distribute this back. Negative y times 4x is negative 4xy. And negative y times negative 7 is a positive 7y. Always check your signs. So that part seems to be okay. Now look, these guys end up being common. That's fantastic. So that means when I factor this, and I finish the factoring by grouping, I've got my 4x minus 7 that I'm taking out of each of these bigger groups. Take out the 4x minus 7, and I'm left with 2x squared minus y. So let's make sure we understand what's going on here. I first took out a greatest common factor of 2y for everything in the polynomial. What I had left with what I had left was a four term polynomial that I factored by grouping. Took out the 2x squared, took out the minus y, and when we did that they had something in common, which was the 4x minus 7. So 4x minus 7 times 2x squared minus y, that's what everything here in blue factors out to be is this guy. So when you combine this with that common factor of y, you get your final answer. So your final answer has that greatest common factor of 2y. It has the 4x minus 7, and it also has the factor 2x squared minus y. These two guys were the factors from factoring by grouping from the inside part right here. And of course, the 2y is that greatest common factor which gets carried down. Now, you can easily check this by multiplying back everything. Okay. Now, there is another way of doing this, but I don't really, you just gotta be very careful about it. So let me rewrite the problem. I'm gonna show you a different way of working this. So here's a big or 16x to the third minus 28x squared y 
minus 8xy squared plus 14y squared. Some students will not see there's a common factor for everybody, and they will jump right into factoring by grouping. If I look at this first group right here, and I try to figure out what's common, well, I see that 4 goes into both of these guys, so I take out a 4. They both have an x squared, and they both contain y. So when I divide out that 4x squared y, I have 4x from this guy, because 4 times 4 is 16, x squared, and 1x is x to the third, and there's your y. Negative 28 divided by 4 is negative 7. You already took out the x squared. You took out the y. Now your second group has the negative 8xy squared plus 14y squared. You lead with a negative, so that's why I'm factoring out. 8 and 14 have a 2 in common, and they both have y squared in common. So let's see what happens when I divide out the negative 2y squared. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. I still have an x left over, but I already took out my two, y, my two y's. 14 divided by negative 2 is a negative 7. You had y squared, you took out y squared. All right, so let's finish this guy. You see that my common factor here is 4x minus 7, and I'm left with 4x squared y minus 2y squared. Well, that looks like it was a lot faster, right? And a lot of students will get this, and they'll be done, but sadly, they're going to be wrong because the instructions with factoring aren't to just factor, but it's to factor completely. So 4x minus 7, there's nothing else you can do with that. But 4x squared y minus 2y squared, they have something in common. And the common factor these guys have is a 2y. So if I take out the 2y, you've got to see what's left over. Well, when I take out that 2y, I've got 2 x squared minus y. So this common factor right here is really easy to miss. You have to make sure that when you're factoring, when you think you're at the end, see, is there anything else this guy can do? No. This guy, yes. The common factor of 2y. So your final answer is really 4x minus 7 times 2y times 2x squared minus y. I'm going to be real honest with you. We don't do this. When you have factors that are monomials, you don't put them in the middle. Guys, or factors that are monomials, go at the front. So we would write this as 2y in the front times 4x minus 7 and now we write the 2x squared minus y. So this is our final answer. And you're going to see that that's the same answer that we had up here. Okay? It's the same answer, just different colors. I apologize about that. But you see this, this is the same thing. Always look for the grace common factor, though. You need to get in the habit of looking for that at all times, because if you don't, you're likely to miss the common factor later on.